Hello, my name is Rachel Lopez, and I will be discussing Franz Brentano today. And in this lecture, I will discuss the differences between Brentano and Wundt, Brentano's method of psychoanalysi, and the question before the question, or Brentano's contributions to the formation of psychology. So Brentano was a philosopher, a theologist, as well as a psychologist in the mid-1800s. He introduced the term intentionality into the field of psychology. Additionally, he moved away from experimental psychology that was popular at the time, and he moved into a more a psychology that focused on the internal human experience as more of a first person rather than a third person experience of consciousness. So he was a forerunner in phenomeno phenomenology and as well as human consciousness. And he also paved the way ultimately for psychologists like Freud and Husserl. So during Brentano's time as a psychologist, um, William Blunt was also prominent, and he was the main founder of experimental psychology. He, um, so Brentano was one of the first psychologists to stray away from one's kind of psychology, which was experimental. Brentano focused rather on what he called psychonosy which he defines psychonosy as pure psychology. It's a psychology that's separated from the physiochemical processes that occur in humans. Now, psychonosy, it contains basic mechanisms of humans' internal perceptions and how they're composed. And it shows the ways in which these mechanisms or elements can be connected to each other to fully explain um, human consciousness and concepts within that. So we called the psychology that one practiced and that included physiology and chemical processes, he called it genetics psychology, and which he even argued was an in inexact science, whereas he argued that um, psychonism was an exact science. So in his book titled Descriptive Psychology, he discusses psychonosy as well as the differences between psychonosy and genetic psychology. See, he also discusses the correct method, or what he said is the correct method of psychonosy. And so that is what I'll focus right now on going forward is the method of psychonosy. And that can even be applied to today's modern psychology as well in certain aspects. So his method of psychoanalysis that he describes in his novel is, it contains five parts. The first being experiencing, the second being noticing, the third fixing, the fourth inductive generalization, and finally the fifth is in deductive use of that information. So first up on the list is experiencing. So. The first part of Brentano's method of psychoanalysis is experiencing, and he explains that a good psychoanalyst must experience and perceive as many aspects of the human experience as possible in order to fully understand human consciousness. However, Brentano realized that it's not possible for a single person to fully experience every aspect of human experience. He explains that as long as the psychonist makes up for this constraint with the other parts in the method, that they can still be successful in the method of psychonosy. However, um, so an example of this would be if someone lacks this ability to smell or taste or see, then by Brentano's standards, they're practicing rudimentary psychonosy because they're missing a key element in consciousness and experience. However, like I said before, if they make it up in the other parts of the method, then they can still be successful in understanding consciousness. So moving on to the second part of the method, um, it's the psychonaut has to notice what they are experiencing 
and it's simply not enough to experience. You must notice what and how you're experiencing phenomena. And this concept can be associated with today's description of self-awareness and its importance in being an effective psychologist because you have to be uh, self-aware of what you're noticing in your everyday experiences to further expand your knowledge of consciousness of your own and others as well. So Mertano in the book states that not noticing can actually have a greater negative effect on psychonosy than say experiencing. And he says this is because a person gets many chances to notice elements of consciousness. So if someone is continually missing those elements every time they're experiencing them, then they cannot understand fully human consciousness. So moving on to our third part of the method is called fixing um, or fixing what you've noticed in order to collect it into your brain. Um, we must translate essentially what we've noticed and think about it in terms of our past, present, and future experiences. And we must also fix what we noticed in the insight of other people as well. Fixing is essentially putting everything into our own memory or putting it into someone else's by using language. The fourth part of the method is called inductive generalization, which is essentially taking what we've experienced, noticed and fixed and generalizing it to other concepts. However, Brentano stated that because we have not experienced or say noticed something does not mean it doesn't exist. So that's important to note as well. Because as previously stated, there can be defects in our experiences as well of lacks of lacking noticing or lack of noticing rather. So when a phenomena is experienced, noticed and fixed into perception, then one must put all that information together and generalize it to a different perception. An example Brentano uses in the book is knowing that we know that pure colors are blue, yellow, and red. That's the phenomenon, the color. So say you did not know that blue was a pure color yet. So first you experienced a color red, let's say. And red is the phenomenon in question. So you experience that, you experience the quality and spatial aspects of the color and other aspects of it. And so then you go on to experience the color blue. So then you would experience blue, you would recognize blue as a pure color because of generalization, because you're noticing certain parts of the color blue that you saw in red. So therefore you're able to generalize the concept of pure color from blue to red, I mean, from red to blue. So the fifth and final part of the method is making deductive use. Now that the psychonist has gathered all that information, they must make deductive use of it. So by determining different factors or patterns and the general laws of experiencing, one can then go on to find answers to many questions of human consciousness, not only within themselves, but within others as well. So moving on, how does this pave the way for Freud and contribute to the future of psychology as a science or to the modern psychology we know today? Well, as stated before, Brentano, he discovered and created the method of psychonosy without using any real kind of experimentation or human experiments, which is similar to how Freud, you know, created his theories, like his theories of consciousness or even his dream theory. Um, it didn't include experimentation, either of them. So Bertano made it possible for future psychologists to study and present their theories without using experimentation. While Freud is often criticized for not using experiments to back up his theories and not have any data for that, his theories of consciousness have greatly shaped modern psychology. And without Brentano, Freud would arguably not have come up with those same concepts or may have not been generally accepted. 
by other psychologists without Brentano as his teacher. And he was also one of the first psychologists to put an importance on introspection, looking within oneself for answers, or looking one in oneself's consciousness and experiences to find an answer to certain things. So introspection, as we know, is still a tool commonly used in psychoanalysis, which is what Freud practiced, and it's still used in other types of therapies in modern psychology as well. So without Brentano and his theories of phenomenology, his methods of psychonosy, we definitely would have not possibly not have the theories we have today surrounding psychoanalysis or human consciousness.